and welcome to this introductory video about the ANSYS Q3D Extractor. And in the previous video, we detailed what is Q3D, and we defined the necessary steps to launch the Q3D simulation. And in this video, we're going to provide a step-by-step -step process in Q3D by setting up and analyzing a planar spiral design. We are going to use the student version of the ANSYS Electronic Desktop, AEDT for short. Now, spiral inductors, they've been around for a long time. For example, they're used as the main design element in the LC tank circuits in filter design. They can be used as an impedance matching element in many passive elements such as antennas or part of an active design, including amplifier, bias design, and bias designs even for diodes, transistors, or even oscillators. Now, the application of 5G and IoT devices, they've actually created an even greater need for on-chip planar spiral inductors, and with that growing demand for wireless power transfer as well. So these on-chip spirals, they're widely used in wireless power transfer, particularly in handheld devices. And in the existing handheld devices, shape and size become important. So it's not only the electrical design, it's also physical format. And there are many shapes that a spiral can take on. They can be circular, they can be rectangular, or even some other polygonal shape. Basically, a spiral is made of coupled lines. And what matters to us is the amount of coupling because we want to achieve a specific inductance of value. Now, the electrical inductance value is dependent on the line spacing, the width of the trace, location to other signals or ground. Remember, where is the current? Including the number of turns in that spiral, the substrate material, what does it sit on? Let's create a quick spiral in Q3D. Here's the interface of the AEDT student version. It shows a blank project. In that desktop tab, select Q3D design and insert it into the project. Let's see and view what the default design settings say. In that project manager window, right mouse click on the Q3D design and select design setting so you can view the project's default setting. In that tab named set material override, check it. This enables the material override feature and this says to the solver, if there are any overlaps in dielectric or a conductor geometry, use the conductor. Consider that for the simulation. Override the dielectric. And for this model, this is what we want. Go ahead and check it. Background material tab. Says that the default background material is vacuum. Fine. Under lossy dielectric, use causal material. Okay. Under that S parameter tab, use transmission line model. Fine. Under the validation entity checks, perform full validation check. Why not? Both good for this model. So now to create the model, navigate to the draw tab above the ribbon area, click on it, select user defined model, select on die spiral inductor. A new window pops up. ANSYS's UDMs automatically create you a model geometry to analyze. The model geometry is parameterized and it could be further processed in the ANSYS EM modeler. Parameterize allows you more variations. Select the parameter tab and the design parameters are shown with some default values. You can go ahead and modify these parameters as required. Go ahead and browse to the column named inductor type. In the adjacent right column that's named value, Click on it and you'll see a list of inductor types that are also available. Select the octagonal type for our demonstration. Don't forget to click OK to accept the changes. And now you'll notice that the spiral inductor is created in the background and you see all the AEDT windows opening up. Just a few clicks and here we have some model geometry for a spiral inductor. No simpler way to do this. In the model history tree, you'll see the objects that were created for this spiral geometry. What's named as object inductor and paddle are assigned to copper types. Silicone is used as a substrate. What we need to do is assign nets. As detailed in that introductory video, you can either assign nets manually or automatically. Let's do it automatically. 
In that project manager window, right mouse click on net, category, select auto identify net, and both the inductor and paddle are automatically assigned as nets. Now let's go ahead and assign the excitation to the inductor. And to make it easier, in the 3D modeler window pane, select the object name inductor, right mouse click, select view, and then select show only selection in the active view. And let's be sure we're in the face selection mode. Just press that F key on your keyboard. Now select one of those two inductor faces that are aligned in the X axis in that 3D modeler window. Right mouse click and assign excitation. Select one of them, right? And select it as a source. In that pop-up window for source, keep the default and click OK to accept. Now do the same for the other face. Select and assign sync as the excitation. Again, keep the default and click OK to accept. Now, we need to add a solution setup for the model. In that project manager window, right mouse click on the analysis category. Select add solution setup. In the solve setup window, you can now see by default, capacitance, conductance, DC resistance and inductance, AC resistance or inductance. They're all selected, keep them selected. Check on the save field options for field visualization. This is why you're using it, this EM tool. View on each of the specific solver and see what the default solver related savings are. These are editable, so you can modify this but for this demonstration, let's keep all the defaults. No need to really change them. And click OK to accept the solution setup. Go ahead and expand the analysis category. Right mouse click on the setup and select Add Frequency Sweep. Select Interpolating as the sweep type and enter a frequency range as shown. Click OK to accept the sweep. Now we're all done with the required steps for a Q3D simulation. Click on the simulation tab below that ribbon area and select validate just to double check you have everything that's necessary. Validate that design. Now go ahead, click on analyze to start the simulation. And once that simulation is completed, go to the project manager window and right mouse click on the results category. It's a spiral inductor, so we're interested in the inductance values. So let's see what is happening to that inductance value. Select Create Matrix Report, Rectangular Plot. Under that category, select ACL Matrix, and under the quantity, select ACL Inductor Source 1, Inductor Source 1, the inductance spiral. Click on New Report to generate that plot. And what do we see? As the frequency increases, the inductance is decreasing. It's expected. But now if your intended value is higher than what you had designed, perhaps add another turn or make the traces closer quickly using the UDM. Or conversely, if the intended value was to be lower, do the opposite, reduce the number of turns and increase the spacing. Or again, perhaps change the substrate. You can do anything in simulation. Now, let's see what's happening to the capacitance. So let's create matrix report rectangular plot and under the category select C matrix and under the quantity select C inductor to inductor the capacitance of that spiral C paddle to paddle the capacitance effect of ground and now C inductance to paddle the capacitive effect of the substrate of that silicon you can plot each one separately or place them all on one plot to compare use different axes Use one plot for the self and then one plot for the substrate. And you can see the self capacitance of the inductor and ground is what is expected. Frequency increases, the capacitance is decreasing. Now, when you look at that plot for C paddle to inductor, you can see the effects of the capacitance increases with frequency. So perhaps if we're interested in increasing the inductance value, we'll need to reduce this capacitive value, perhaps be more creative in your ground design. Go ahead, modify the geometry and rerun the simulation. It didn't take that long. And similarly, you can plot the conductance, the DCL and R, the ACL and R plots. They're all available. Now the power of the EM simulation is to visualize the plot. Now let's plot the EM fields of the spiral inductor. Right mouse click on the inductor object in the model tree window, select AC RL fields, mag surface JAC, retain all the defaults in the pop-up window and click on done to plot the AC surface current magnitude. 
Now let us modify this field plot. Double click on the field plot color key and in that pop-up window click on the scale tab. In the field next to the number of divisions, increase that number to say 50. Having more divisions will result in a smoother plot. You can also modify the color limits of these plots. By default, the limits are applied automatically based on the results. You can also specify the min and max values for these limits. If required, you can also use the log scale to improve the plot visualization. Let's go ahead and select the log scale for this plot. Close this window and let's plot the E field on the substrate's top face. Switch to the face selection mode, select the top face of the substrate and right mouse click on it. Select CG fields, E, mag E. Retain all the defaults in the pop-up window and click on done to plot the electric field magnitude. Note that how the E field is varying along the spiral. You can also animate these field plots to get more insight on how the EM fields interact with each other. In the project manager window, right mouse click on the electric field plot and select animate. In the pop-up window, retain all the default values for the start, the stop, and the steps. Click on OK to accept. Here you go. You can see how the electric field varies with its phase, and in this way you can also animate any required field quantity. So in this video, we detailed a step-by-step -step workflow in Q3D. We designed an on-chip spiral inductor using the installed UDM feature, which automatically created the model geometry. Thank you for watching this video. And for more videos and information on our ANSYS electronic tools or any of our ANSYS simulation tools, please go to ansys.com forward slash courses today.